Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Demi Stevens from Hay 19 right here in Torrance cooking up one of my favorites. It's comfort food at its best. We're making a classic grilled cheese sandwich served with tomato bisque. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in your own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is a familiar face, a friend, <laughs> and just an all-around great person, Demi Stevens from Hay 19 and Ortega 120. Yeah, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I mean, we've done this several times now, mm -hmm. right? All right. Quite, we're, um, for a little over four, coming up in four years. We've transcended uh -huh. like, like guest into friends. Correct. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. At least that's what I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But silly friends can say that to each other, right. so you kind of put my point. Right. right on. Now, you have brought uh, <clears throat> something that is, I, I mean, to say it's a classic is just, you know, it's sort of an understatement. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like an ode to everybody's childhood. Right. This was a request of one of your producers. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? I think that nobody's going to complain. I think she just wanted it for breakfast. It, it's, it's funny. We, we're obviously talking about tomato bisque and, you know, grilled cheese sandwich. And right. I mean, not only did we all grow up with that, but you're seeing that now pop up on menus everywhere. Right. I mean, everything from food trucks to high-end restaurants will do their their version of it. They might yeah. serve it in a little demi tasse cup and right. a finger sandwich, but mm -hmm. you, you find it everywhere. I think it's a quality of ingredient on that one, especially on, and, and the simplicity of the process. Yeah. You know, it kind of takes you back a little bit. It takes sort you back of TV a lot. dinners, Saturday morning cartoon kind and of just thing. Just comforting. Yeah. And, you know, when you're mm -hmm. sick or you just need, you need that that sort of that that comfort food, it's it's one of the best. This is the number three item that people Yelp or review us about. Really? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. The chicken pot pie, the Chrissy's night off, and then this. Yeah, out of all the, and, and you've got some amazing, and you're talking about Hay 19 now. Yeah, same thing, So, hey I mean, you've got some amazing dishes on that, some complex dishes on that, that menu, but mm -hmm. yet it's the tomato, tomato bisque. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, let's Who get knew? started. Let's start actually by talking about some of these ingredients. Why don't you run me through them here? This is uh, carrots and celery. Okay. Tomatoes. Right. Basil. Uh, butter, tomato paste, and then we're going to finish them off with the um, mashed potatoes and some cream. Now you can veganize this if you need breaks. to. Wait, hold on a second. Mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Now, now I, I imagine you're using this to sort of give it some body, thicken it. Correct. I've seen a lot of things used for that, everything from bread to rice to oatmeal. Mm -hmm. I have never seen anyone use mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I am, ex so, and you know what? I, what a great use for leftover mashed potatoes. Right. Which, you know, I mean, you, you sort of stuck before but sort of making things like like maybe croquettes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Make some tomato bisque. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people are using the, uh, if you're ketoing or paleoing or whatever, you can also use like a, a, the cauliflower mash. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Yeah. So where do we start? We're going potatoes. Yeah. So. <laughs> we're going full of potato. So we're going to soften these veg first. So I'm going to, I have this um, heated up already over here. Okay. And so, um, and actually I'm going to hit it with some salt because I already have it hot. So I'm not going to burn everything off the bat. Okay. Um, start out with a little butter. Yeah. Some butter. And again, you can do this vegan. You can do this with, um, um, Oils, if you'd like, you can do it with sure. any of the vegan um, butters out there. Pretty forgiving when it comes yeah, to this just recipe. Yeah, go for some sort of an oil. Yeah, because when I was looking, it's funny. I was looking at your recipe, and it's so it, it, it's it's remarkably different than mine. Mm -hmm. You know, my own personal recipe. Uh, you know, and it just shows you that there's a lot of ways to do things, and especially with this dish. Yeah. You know, you know so many different uh, ingredients. Like, I mean, I don't use fresh tomatoes. I use canned tomatoes right. in mine. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I use, I don't use this part of the mirepoix, I use onions and garlic. Right. You know, so it's just a lot of different things that you could throw in here, I bet. Yeah, I think it just goes, I, I'm a big believer in quality of ingredient. Yeah. You know, we buy a lot of um, fruits and vegetables uh, via the farmer's market and, and different farmer's market programs. Um, so um, hitting up really on the non-GMO as much as humanly possible. Sometimes it's hard to get, like, corn. Yeah. Right. Can't really yeah, happen. Yeah, that's a tough one. Right. Um, but these items we can do, and the fresher the better. And so we just try not to overcomplicate things. If we can do things that are just straightforward, really 
good right. quality of ingredient, then we're golden. Great, great. Yeah, and you know, we should say that you know this is a, a really good recipe, since you're using the fresh tomatoes here, really good recipe. If you've got tomato garden, and you know what, how in your oh, backyard. Oh, and all of a sudden it's like, whoo, All yeah. of a sudden you have <laughs> mass amounts of tomato, and right. you've made enough salsa and marinara sauce, and mm -hmm. you want something else. Uh, yet another option. And you started a spaghetti sauce company. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right, so our, our, our so we're gonna soften salad these. is going in there to get soft. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is all eventually going to get blended, right? Right. We're okay. going to put it in the food processor at a certain point. So don't let this part of it scare you. So I think it's also sort of important to, to, to mention then that you don't have to be crazy awesome with your cuts here. No. This, this, can, this mm -hmm. is all rough chop, roughly chopped, mm -hmm. and, you know, quick, quick. But you do want to peel the carrot. You do. Okay. Yeah, that's just... And you want to clean up the celery, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. So we're literally just going to do this and let this soften, and then you and I are going to do some tomatoes and um, some uh, basil. Got you. So you want me to get some, some, some basil going here? You can. Okay. You can get fancy with it, and you get to use that very special knife. Ah, uh -huh. yes, yes. I got. I mean, I, this is a very, very sharp knife. So how much of this basil would you like me to use, Demi? Let's go with about a majority of that one. Okay. Maybe leave just a couple of little spriggies left. Okay, and it is beautiful. It is vibrant and fresh. Mm -hmm. and it's it's nice. the, the live basil. And for now, some reason, I always kill it, though. I have to keep going to uh, the grocery store you, uh, you, you just use the leaves, correct? Yes. Yeah, the, the stems can be a little, a little bitter, a little mm -hmm. soapy. I do that with everything. Like, we have a few dishes that have um, collard greens or uh, kale, etc., and we um, cut the... Um, Cut the, the I call them veins, but they uh, we cut those out yeah. to get rid of that bite. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, cilantro, you get away with it with cilantro. Yeah. That's not a bad one, but when it comes to, and especially also when, when the, this plant gets bigger and they get sturdier, mm -hmm. then it's really no bueno. Really no bueno. So now, um, how, uh, tell me how the, how the restaurant's doing. How are Hay 19 and Ortega doing? They're amazing. Hay 19 is uh, killing it. Ortega 120 killing it still. We're very lucky. We're over 10 years old now at Ortega 120. That's, so amazing. that's amazing. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. We, you know, we opened um, in, in May of 2008, and the economy crashed right at, you know, in September. Yeah, that was the we year. We didn't even have a sign on the door. Well, I have been to both of your establishments, and I love them equally. Thank you. Well, I now really I'm at, I have a, that coffee, um, the nine and a half coffee room as well at Hay 19, which is, you know, half of 19. Um, when, um, when no, I'm going to be introducing you as like Demi 2000. Or well, my, my Insta, <laughs> Demi 12019. Right? Um, no, it's um, with Hay 19, my son's name is Zane, and the previous restaurant also started with a Z. And um, I wanted to do something for him. Right. And it was the hardest purchase I've ever done. So when my attorney called, because um, I've opened um, nine restaurants, I own two and a half, I guess, technically, with the coffee room. Wow. Um, and um, I couldn't figure, I didn't even write a business plan. I was working on something else in, um, in El Segundo, of all places. And my attorney called and said, yeah, this is, uh, you got it. I'm like, oh, okay, what I get, the license or the business, or you know, I didn't want the business per se, one of right. the product, uh, you know, equipment, et cetera. And he said, oh, you got it. And I said, uh, okay. And he goes, uh, I need a DBA. And so I didn't really know what to do uh, about the name. I said, okay, give me 24 hours. And I got on uh, uh, the internet and before everything became about politics and just kind of mind-numbed myself a little bit. Right. And there was my son standing next to the Stanley Cup, <laughs> and somebody <laughs> said, hey, 19, don't touch the cup. Because that was his number. It's his jersey number, yeah. So he plays um, travel hockey. Uh, he's a AAA player for the Junior Kings. Right. And, um, Amazing. I, so I named the restaurant for him, and that's how I was able to do it. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Know, we, we should mention here that it's like, you know, owning a restaurant, especially in L.A., in this day and age, is not easy. And there's a mm. lot of them that, that, that go under. A lot. I mean, it's just... Well, the they open for a couple of years, right. and then they close. Right. And it's just a very... Um, different 
different way of doing business as opposed to, you know, in other states. So, to ha I mean, to, to have two restaurants, two and a half, as you said, mm -hmm. um, and going strong, one ten years plus, and how long for Hay 19 now? Coming up on four. You know, that's something to be said there. You're gonna it's be fun. But you know what? Torrance is this amazing community of people that are so incredibly supportive. Very and Very much so. Man, oh man. And, um, you know, one time we had somebody go on um, one of those review sites and talk about how long my ticket time was on the Meet Your Makers, the pork chop. Well, that's a double cut pork chop. Yeah, it takes a while to cook. Hi. Because <laughs> we do this crazy thing called cooking the food. <laughs> and, um, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, and so somebody else went on to the internet and defended me. I didn't even have to say anything. Oh, that's beautiful. It was really interesting. That's beautiful. That's, uh, so that's support. That's, that's, yeah. uh, that's love right there. I don't generally read those, but somebody called me about it because it it was funny. It was, oh, it took 25 minutes for my double cut pork chop. Yeah, dude, 23 minutes for us to cook it. So, <laughs> you know. Right, <laughs> just right. Just like, uh, it's an interesting thing. People often think of things coming out in bags, but in, uh, in Torrance, people really do. I mean, who knew you could throw a restaurant like that uh, into a strip mall in Torrance and still do an amazing, you know, get an amazing business out of it. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, you know, and the thing is, is it's, it's not like this is a city that, that doesn't have food options. It does. There are a ton of food options mm -hmm. in this city. So it's even, you know, says more about, you know, what, what you've been able to create with both of your restaurants. I think it's, it's pretty remarkable. But I got to tell you, Debbie, those carrots and, uh, and celery there, uh, sauteing in that butter smells so good. Isn't that amazing? It's it, so simple, but it's so good. Uh, really, it really, and you know, this dish, I, I, it really, I mean, olive oil does work, but mm -hmm. that butter just makes it, Buttery, yeah. you know. If you <laughs> use those really good, amazing olive oils. Yeah, mm -hmm. also good. Or finish maybe with a little bit of olive oil, right? Okay. right. Yeah, that's kind of how I'll do mine. I'll finish with a little olive oil, a little bit more basil. There we go. We almost got it here. Now, after we have these, get these seated, we need to chop them. Yeah, but again, you don't have to worry much about how they look. Just a rough chop. Yeah. All right. And if you're doing it at home and you might not have knives that somebody comes and sharpens for you, right. you get that frustration when you're on this side and oh, your knife yeah. decides it doesn't want to work. So I always just, you know. Just cut it from this side? I'll hold on to it and cut it from this side, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there you go. You know. All right. Yeah. Oh, but these knives are sharp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And you can't trust a chef who doesn't have sharp knives. Right. And you, you just don't dole your knives out to just anybody. Right. You know, that's a very, um, it's a very important little, it's really an intimate moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always thought, <coughs> you know, it's funny, there's, there's, uh, this can almost, it's like a, like a, 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 an edible pot, not edible, but like a drinkable pasta sauce, right? Yeah, it exactly. It kind of is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's. Not, I mean, it's not something I necessarily would serve over pasta, but yet there is sort of that reminiscent of that, correct? Yeah. There's, so yeah, for me, and I, it's that real comfort thing. There's a, a restaurant in New York, one of my favorites, that um, gives you chicken soup at 4 a.m. when they close in a little cup. So there's something about that little piece of warmth, you know? Yeah. Which I, I think is brilliant because you get good and hammered and then you have chicken soup, so. And then, you know, the combination of tomatoes with cheese, too. You know, <coughs> because you're, you know, you have cheese with your pasta. Right. And then the grilled cheese sandwich. Well, and we're basiling it. We're just not right. garlicking it. Well, there's some combinations that uh, are just, uh, are just classic and, uh, you know, can be utilized in a lot of different ways, I guess. <coughs> All right. Well, I'm almost done here. Now, do these go into the pot as well? They're going to roll right into this pot. And then um, we're going to break it down, but not for too long. Um, Normally, we're going to let everything sit and simmer for about an hour to an hour and a half. But well, we only have a half hour show. Right. <laughs> so I brought some that is done. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to add more salt and pepper to it. We're going to add I'll the. I'll actually um, take your cutting board. Okay. Put this that way. Uh, we're going to add um, some funness to. Some uh, funness. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the salt and the pepper, and then we're going to break this stuff down. <coughs> now, now, you said that this would cook for usually, what, about an hour? About an hour, hour and a half. I have to put water in it so right. I can so cover. Um, I'm just trying to get it good and mixed in. You don't want to let it just kind of, you know, you want it to be able to mesh together, so move your stuff around. Don't get lazy here. Right. 
Okay. So I'm going to so put water. The water, water. just kind of helps it get started. Mm -hmm. And what is that, maybe like two cups, cup and a half? Give or take. Okay. Yeah, it's just basically your, your rule is to cover it. And, yeah, and you're, just, you're, getting, you're getting water from your tomatoes, basically. Yes, so you that's are. We took out some of it, but um, yeah. there will be those grandmothers that will argue about taking that out. Yeah. But um, that, that just didn't. You know, it's kind of like the Mexican mole thing. You ask a hundred people right. how to make mole, you're going to get a hundred answers. Also, it depends on the tomato too, and yes. what, 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 mm -hmm. what sort of shape they're in. Right. You know, backyard tomato, I might keep that in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Something I get from the store, probably do that as well. Yeah. So, yeah, all right. So, uh, are we going to get that into the uh, the food processor now, I am. or mm -hmm. we we would we would let this cook for an hour and then we would blend it. Now, you, if you don't have a food processor, because what you can use a blender or like even a stick blender yes, too. Yes, you can. And a, a immersion blender. Immersion in blender, my, right? In my brain. Yeah, and it just have to be careful with like a, a blender, like because you're doing hot liquid that you want that. Right. The, 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 the cover on top to be off, that little hole exposed, but then like a towel over it so exactly. it doesn't splat everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is a big, giant, industrial blah, blah, That's blah. That's a beast right there. You're, yeah. It's sitting on the cord, actually. You might is wanna, it? Yeah. You might want to just... Here we go. I got you got it. me? Thank uh -huh. you. There it is. Yeah, that's a beast right there. That's mm -hmm. one that's built for restaurants. Yeah, and it's used constantly. So yeah. it looks, um, it does not look pretty anymore. If you're looking for your equipment to be pretty, do not bring it to me. Yeah, but, but, but that thing's got to be used. I mean, look at the size of the, 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 ca the motor on it itself. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's all set up for safety, this one. Right. So um, I have a ladle. Oh, uh, there might be a ladle underneath, or if not, maybe right behind you. I had one. <clears throat> um, well, don't do what I do. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I, I know, can I see do this stuff, but um, don't do what I do. So the, the key with the food processors, additionally, is I'm trying to do as much liquid as possible first. Right. That's my little we don't trick. Want this to splatter. There we yeah. go. Um, Look at that. Oh, that, ooh, it's a, ooh. that's a that's a full pot right there. A little bit left in that. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> Okie dokie. So we would have let this go longer, but if you're in a big hurry and you need to do it, you can still get away yeah. with it. Yeah. Sure. I'm breaking this part down because we're going to add uh, that in the uh, cream and the mashed potatoes, but I'm going to take part of this out because I don't have enough I was going to uh, say, room. do we have enough room in there? No. Yeah. There we go. Stay over there. This has all those safety measures <laughs> yeah. so that, you know. So you don't uh, safety shop first. off. Right, right. It, it basically won't let you process unless everything's perfect. Right. Everything has to be completely lined up. So I'm going to just... Ixnay some of this. One of, one of my one of my worst kitchen accidents came with a food processor. It was at the end of the meal, cleaning up. Someone else was doing dishes. It, unbeknownst to me, now it was summertime. Everyone was going to go to the pool, mm -hmm. so I was in the kitchen with bare feet. Rule number one: no, no, right? Right. And I was handed the pot with the blade in it, and I didn't realize the blade was in it. And I turned the pot oh. upside down, Whoops. and from about four feet high. That blade went right on my foot. Oh, good times, <laughs> and we survived. Can I get it was pretty? not pretty. It was not pretty, and yeah, and needless to say, did not go in the pool that day. Right. I went to the emergency room. That was good times. Look at you. <clears throat> yeah. No cactus cooler for you that day. No. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've, I've, I keep from going into the kitchen with bare feet now, especially when there's blades involved. You can pour the. Um, milk product in when it is um, in the spinning. pot okay. yeah I just did it oh, this oh, way. oh as it's spinning I see yeah like a margarita or you know I'm not a big fan of um, blenders in general behind bars okay you know I don't have a blender at hay 19 I have to have one at Ortega 120 for yeah I was gonna say I mean, so so for a blended margarita are they just not served or at Ortega at hay 19 yeah no just uh, on the rocks. Well, we do the number 19 there, which was kind of my answer. Okay. Um, because we had so many people asking for the margarita, uh, and it's right around the corner, so I can't do that. You know, they're a third of a mile from each other. My house is in the middle. Perfect. So, you know, because I live here in Torrance, and um, uh, it's a really funny um, 
a st state of uh, being that I we joke that I need a zip line between the two <laughs> restaurants. <laughs> now, we're pretty much good to go here, correct? Probably yeah. adjust some seasonings, get it back in the Salt pot. Salt and pepper, you're going to go right back into that. Okay. And, um, and it would have been, I would have doubled into this. I Personally, I leave it, this has got a little bit of chunk to it right. still. So I would leave that and add this in sure, so we have not? a little bit more little consistency. Yeah. Right. Well, I tell you, why don't we uh, take a break? We'll do that. We'll get cleaned up. Uh, and then we're on the other side, we're going to make some grilled cheese sandwiches. Ooh, living on the edge. It's going to be good. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Planning the right amount of food is hard. The guesstimator makes it easy. Just tell it who's coming and what's for dinner. Then it tells you how much to make. And yes, it even plans for leftovers. Try it at SaveTheFood.com. We are back. I'm here in the kitchen with Demi Stevens. I almost want to call you the Demi, all those other famous <laughs> Demi names, but that, not going to happen today. <laughs> anyway, we are making a childhood classic, uh, the epitome of comfort food, uh, tomato soup and or tomato bisque, bisque. excuse me, bisque. tomato bisque. Let's fancy that up a little bit. And grilled cheese sandwiches. And we've got mm -hmm. our bisque over there staying warm in that pot for uh, for the next segment when mm -hmm. I get to eat it. So let's talk about grilled cheese here. Uh, bread. Um, you know, I, gosh, you could use a lot of different breads here, You right? can, and I think that that's really up to the individual. For us, um, I use the sourdough. Okay. Um, but we also have gluten-free breads. So oh, at Hay 19, we only have, uh, everything is, every item that you would think would not be gluten-free is. So all okay. the cheese sauces and everything. Great. So you can also get a gluten-free bread. This is not gluten-free. This is a all regular right. uh, sourdough. And the key and the trick which is an amazing trick, is that we use this stuff called real cheese. Yeah, right. Which most restaurants don't do. They right. use like cheese blends and they're full of cellulose. Cellulose process, is wood chips. Processed yeah. cheese, right. Mm -hmm. it's because of their actually. meltability. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, and, and that's the other thing. You can go, uh, like, the, 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 the script is. Is, is a big one in terms of uh, what cheeses you can use, right? right? I mean, you can, you can go anywhere with that. Cheddar, yeah. you can use. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a white cheddar. A white cheddar, okay. Swiss, I love Swiss on it. Or, 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 or a combination of cheeses. Right. That's kind of nice too, where you get a little bit of creaminess, a little bit of sharpness, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of a, of a flavor profile. And now you're using your your fat vehicle of choice here is butter again. Butter. Some people use mayonnaise. Some mm -hmm. people use a combination of butter and mayonnaise. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we like butter. Yeah. We're butter friendly. Yeah, I like butter too. The little trick on that one is it's, I'm going to butter both sides on one. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, fancy. All right. And uh, as the saying goes, crust to crust is a must, mm -hmm. right? Got to go edge yeah. to edge out with that. <laughs> crust that to crust is a must. I love that you know that one. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you get blank spots, mm -hmm. and we don't want that. Yeah. Now, I, at, in the restaurants, I'm going to do something different, which is that I would put it on um, on a Kamal or a on flat, flat top. top. Okay. Yeah. And um, that, uh, so I'm going to put the bread down separately, and then I'll add the cheese. But for the purposes of doing it at home, nine times out of ten, you don't have a Kamal at right. home. Um, so we'll do it that way. And then I also, if I'm going to do it at my house, I'll flip it. And butter this side because buttering it inside of the pan when you have forgotten to do it is a pain in the butt. Yeah, I don't like that either. Yeah. I hear you. I do the same thing. Do the same thing. And I think too the key with you know, grilled cheese, it's such a it's such a simple sandwich. Yet, simple. Yet you can mess it up. And I think one of the I mean, for me, the, the two ways to mess it up would be to either burn it badly. Right. Or serve a grilled cheese where the cheese is not, not melted. melted. Yeah. That is like a faux pas. And I, and I think that's sort of the key is finding that right heat to where it can cook long enough right. to where the cheese melts, but yet we're not going to burn the bread. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I'm a little hot on this one, so I'm going to pull off my heat. You can see the smoke coming up. Good call, And you right. see the browning on the butter under there. So I'm not used to electric stoves. Yeah, I know. I only I know you. gas. I'm I hear you. I, maybe I'm spoiled. Well, so you get, you'll get a little bit of a pass if it's a little burn in spots because also too you've got one of those old school pans that have been I'm used a big for. believer in keeping my flipping pans. You know what? At my house, <laughs> I can tell. At my house, I bought. I am going to be. I'm coming up on 50. I am knocking on 50's door, and I have the same pots and pans that I bought when I turned 19. Wow. Yeah. Here comes I that 19 again. 
Good number. By the way, I opened that door to 50. It's not that scary. No. No, it's fine. I'm not it's the worried new about 40. it. Yeah. Well, I decided it's the new 21. Okay. I like yeah. that better. All right. Nice. There you go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. And then I've reheated. I'm heating up the soup over here. And then we also have um, our little garnet. Oh, okay. Um, so this is a sour cream, but we do lime, salt, and pepper in the sour cream. Just to give it a little zhuzh. Yeah, lime, well, it's a lime juice, so it's a little bit more um, pourable. Okay. Oh, and, right, right. Otherwise, yeah. it'd be very... And then these are just chopped chives. Chopped chives. And that'll mm -hmm. be for when we garnish. Exactly. Okay. That sandwich is looking really good. Are we almost... We almost ready it's to go. It's ready there? for you. It has your name uh, okay. all over it. <laughs> all right. Well, well here's the test. You, you got to cut it open and make sure we got that cheese nice and melty because we, we talked about it. If not, that. I'm fired. <laughs> no, I'll make you put it right back in the pan. Get it right, girl. Let's see how. Oh. Oh, uh, that's a good sign. Where are we at on that? There we go. Yeah. Can't even see it anymore. That's what we're looking mm, for. Fancy schmancy. Beautiful. All right. Well, we are going to plate this up, and on the other side, I get to eat all of it. So don't go away. We'll be right back. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread. And kiss them all soundly. Lights out. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. We are back. I'm in the kitchen here with Demi Stevens from Hay 19 in Ortega 120. And I'm about ready to sample a delicious looking bowl of tomato bisque. Yes. With have a grilled cheese sandwich. It. Melty, May melty I? grilled cheese. Can I just cheese. get right to this? Ooh. Can I? You should, but then uh, you, you can have your little taster, but then you have to dunk and. Right. Do it the right way. I'll I'm let you do pro. that. I'm Here we go. It's like putting salt on tequila. Oh, delicious. <laughs> and you know, the mashed potatoes, I mean, it, it did provide body, but not the type of body. I thought it was, I thought it'd be even thicker. No. Mm -mm. It is real like a bisque-like quality to mm -hmm. it. Mm, that's delicious. That is really good. Very good tomato soup. Thank mm. you. Now, the real test, though. Yes, the saying? dunk. We got to do this, right? Mm -hmm. All right. How's that actual cheese? <laughs> this is heaven. This is awesome. Mm. This is going right to your producer's office. This is a once a week meal for sure. No problem. Mm. We have a lot of people buy this in summer. Who knew? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You still yeah. eat soup in summer. It's that good. Yeah. Listen, I urge all of you to make this, but better yet, you can also go to Hay 19 and order it. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel or like it. Or you can order it to go. We do large quantity of all chicken pot pies and pot roast soup. Yeah, this is Ribs this is really good. Holidays. I'm going to be getting back in here, but I don't want to say goodbye to you with my mouth full. So let me just say thank you. You are awesome <laughs> once again. Nice to see you. I'm sure, we'll see you back here soon. <laughs> and it just goes to show you, we truly are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. Thanks for watching Community Cooking. We'll see you next time. I'm going in. <laughs>